So for the first one, if you borrow 3,000 at 6% 6 for six months, your interest is 3,000 times 0 0.06 times six over 12, which is gonna give you at $90 interest. So how much do you pay back? 3,000 plus 90 or 3,090 dollars. For the second one, it's a little more difficult. 7% compounded semi-annually means how many times a year? Twice. So we're not going to use 7%. It's going to be 7 divided by 2 or 3.5% every six months. So that means it's 103.5% at the end of each period, at each half year, or every six months. So it's going to be 1.035. So 4,000 times 1.035 to what power? Five years, twice a year will be 10. Fifty six forty two forty. You may have that. No. Well, since there's only a few people in class today. Okay, so today we want to wrap up just a few things. Um, you know, we saw powers last class where you know powers were that repeated multiplication for multiplying by the same thing over and over again it's a power so if I have something like 8 to the third that just means I'm multiplying by 8 three times or I'm multiplying together three eighths which comes up to 512 and we've already learned how to do that on our calculators but every operation we've seen so far has an opposite you know addition has subtraction they reverse each other multiplication and division they reverse each other What's the opposite of a power? A root. If I have 7 squared, that's 7 times 7, or 49. If I want to reverse that, I do the square root of 49, which is 7. Because what this is asking is what number squared equals 49. Now, you have to be careful. Because negative 7 squared is... 49. So technically the square root of 49 is 7 or negative 7. We're just in the real world, we're usually conserved with positive numbers. Most numbers aren't negative unless it's my checking account. But for the most part, we're dealing with positive numbers. So if I had 8 to the power of 3, which we said is 512, to reverse that, the symbol looks like this the third root. So the third root of 512 has to be 8. Could it be negative 8? Well, negative 8 to the third power, negative 512. So that would be negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8. Two negatives makes a positive, then times the third negative will make it negative again. So here, this is not, the, the third root of 512 is not a negative 8, it's just positive 8. Yes. Can I do a third root of negative 512? Yeah, we just saw negative 8 to the third power is negative 512. The third root of negative 512 is negative 8. But if I look back up here, could I do a square root of negative 49? Is there any number that I can square and get a negative 49? No. If you tried to punch that in your calculator, it would give you an error or a domain error because you cannot square root a negative number because there is no number you can square that will come back negative because anything times itself has to be positive. Positive times a positive is a positive. Negative times a negative is a, is a positive. So you cannot square root a negative number. Yep. Negative 5 to the 4th power is 625. It's like you would ask, if it's the 4th power, is it going to be positive again? Yeah. 
is negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. Well, if we do this out step by step, negative 5 times negative 5 is a positive 25. Negative times a negative. Well, positive times a negative is going to be a negative again. 25 times 5 is 125. Well, now it's a negative times a negative is going to be positive again. 125 times 5 is 625. Anything to the fourth power is going to be positive. Do you recognize a pattern developing here? Yeah. Second power and fourth power, it has to be positive. Third power, it can be negative. What do you think is going to happen if it's the fifth power? It can be negative. The pattern that's developing here is if the power is odd, it can be positive or negative depending on what we're starting with. If the power is even, the result will always be positive because there's an even number of those negatives. They pair up and cancel out to make it positive. Does that make sense? So what that means on the other side of things, we saw here you could not take the square root of a negative number, but you could take the third root of a negative number. What about a fourth root of a negative? No, because anything to the fourth power is going to be positive. I could take the fourth root of 625. What's it going to be? 5 or negative 5. Even roots, it could be positive or a negative answer. We, we're getting concerned with the, the positive. Just like with square roots, square root of 49 could be 7 or negative 7. An even root, because anything to an even power is going to be positive, an even root can go back to either a positive or a negative number. Again, we're usually concerned with the positive. A fifth root, however, I can take an odd root of a negative number. The fifth root of negative 243 is just going to be negative 3. The fifth root of 3,125 is going to be Not off the top of your head? Yeah. On your calculator, if you want to know how to do a fifth root, uh, most of you have an X root or an N root key. Uh, most of your, your phone doesn't have that particular key. You, yeah, it does. If you tip it sideways, it should go to scientific notation. Yours doesn't go that way? That's oh. boring. Mine did. Okay. Um, on the Texas Instruments calculator, it's actually above the caret key. So it's a second function or a shift yeah, function. Okay. So what you would enter for this on the Texas Instruments, you'd put in the 5. Then you'd have to hit second or shift. And then that X root key, which is above the caret key. And then put in the 3,125. It should spit out 5. 5 to the 5th power is 3,125. If it was a negative 3,125, it's been on a negative 5. Because remember, odd powers and odd roots, you, the negatives will stay negative. Even powers, of course, the answer will always be positive. Even roots, you can't even do an even root on a negative. It gives you an error. That's really all we need to know for doing our roots and powers. So I want to finish up one little thing from yesterday, which is annuities. In an annuity, an annuity is, you know, we, we talked yesterday about if you take a lump sum and you put it away at 21 or 25 or whatever age and you let it sit there for 40 years, how much it's going to grow with that compound interest. Well, an annuity is like what we did on that spreadsheet where I said, well, we're going to put away $5,000 every year or maybe you're going to put away $100 every month. And that's what an annuity is, is you're putting in money every period of time. And it's growing. Now we talked before, at the end of our last unit, we talked about putting in numbers into formulas. Like if I had the formula voltage equals to current times resistance, we talked about, okay, if I give you that the current is 3 amps and the resistance is 4 ohms, 
That means our voltage is 3 times 4, or 12. Right? Annuities are going to work the same way. We're going to give you a formula, and we're going to have to work with that formula. The formula for annuity looks like this. The future value, or the balance at the end, is equal to your regular payments made in times, yes, that is three open parentheses, one plus your rate divided by N, where N is your number of periods in a year, close parentheses, to the power of n times t, where t is your number of years, minus 1, close parentheses, divided by, open parentheses, your rate divided by n, close parentheses, and close parentheses again. That looks really ugly, but it's not so bad. Now this is if you're paying in, by the way. So let's take a look at this. Let's say you guys are, I know you're varying ages. Most of you in here right now are under 22, 23, right? Yeah, pretty much. All but one. You're the old man in the room? Uh, yeah. Oh. There you go. Um, let's say you start at 22. And you go to 67 again. So we're looking at 45 years. And you get that job, and you know what? We talked about putting away $5,000 a month yesterday. That can be kind of hard to do. So let's say you do you do a tax shelter where they have them take it right out of your paycheck. So you're just going to put away $100 a month, I think you can spare. Sure, right? $100 a month. So you're going to put away $100 a month. I should say per month. $100 per month for 45 years. At, let's say you're going to get 9% interest. So we're looking for the balance here. Our payment is $100 times 1, 2, 3 parentheses. 1 plus, what's our rate going to be? 9% is so 0.09. Divided by, and is the number of periods in a year. Well, we didn't say compounded monthly or anything like that. But we're putting away $100 each month, which means the interest is going to get figured out every month. That's going to be divided by 12. Close parentheses. How many periods total? This is 45 years times 12 months in a year. So that's going to be 540 periods. Minus 1. Close parentheses. Bless you. Divided by, open parentheses, 0 0.09, divided by 12, and then close and close. So let's punch this in the calculator. So 100 times 1, 2, 3, open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.09, divided by 12, close parentheses, to the power of 540. Now on my calculator, if I'm in a power, I have to hit the arrow key to get out either the down arrow or the right arrow. Some of your calculators you may have to. Others you can just keep going and punch minus 1. Close parentheses divided by open parentheses. 0 0.09 divided by 12. Close and close. So that $100 a month starting at age 22, at 9% interest is $740,487.85.
So hundred dollars a month is gonna get you a seven hundred to seven hundred and fifty thousand year retirement. That's not bad, right? Could live with that. How many of you guys try one? Let's say you're gonna put away fifty dollars per month at twelve percent interest, and you're gonna work for forty years. So I'm gonna have you guys set this up in your book. So our balance is gonna equal our payment times blah blah blah. I'll scroll back up to the formula for you here. So you did. So it's fifty dollars per month times one two three one plus twelve percent is point one two divided by per month. So divide by twelve. Close parentheses to the power of 480. 12 months in a year times 40 years. Minus 1. Close divided by open. 0. 0.12 divided by 12. Close and close. What did you guys come up with? Think that's wrong? That seems a little small. I'm getting 588,238.63. But I tell you what, though, if you would like to invest $50 a month with me for the next 40 years, I would be more than happy to invest it for you and pay you back your 11,000. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not going to live another 40 years. Not really. So, the next, the other side of this is what happens when you're drawing the money back out. This is if you're paying the money in. If you're drawing the money back out, you're going to, it's going to look a little different. So, you're going to have a lump sum. You have this large amount of money sitting there that you're drawing out in your retirement. So, let's say you retire at 67, you got this money there. Let's say you have, you've saved up $200,000. And you want to know how much you can pull out. Let's say you plan on making it for another 15 years. So you're going to draw out for 15 years. And you're going to earn, let's say you're going to earn 4% interest. Now, why is it such a low when I was doing like 9 and 12% when you're paying in? Well, when you're paying in, you can be a little more aggressive and go for more aggressive funds. When you're drawing out, you really don't want the stock market to crash on you and lose a third of your money or half your money or whatever. So you generally go into a little bit more conservative things, a little safer investments. So you're going to get a lower interest rate when you're drawing out. Actually, usually about 10 years before you retire, you switch everything over to safer things get a lower interest rate just so you don't have that big loss three years before you retire and now you can't retire now if you have that big loss 12 years before you retire chances are the market's going to recover and you're going to be just fine to retire but as you get closer to retirement you usually start to switch things over to a little bit more safer investments the formula for this is the monthly payment what you can draw out monthly is equal to the lump sum. I'm just going to put lump here. Divided by 1, 2, 3. 1 plus your rate divided by n, which is just going to be monthly here, so that would be 12 again, to the power of n times t, which is, again, number of times a year times your number of years, minus 1, close parentheses. It's looking familiar so far. Divided by open parentheses. R divided by N times, parentheses, 1 plus R divided by N to the power of NT, close and close. So just a little bit more complex here. Got this extra little piece on the end. So for this problem, 
It's going to be the 200,000 divided by 1, 2, 3, 1 plus 0.04. It is monthly. We're, I didn't write it down, but we did ask how much we could draw out each month. Divided by 12, so close parentheses, to the power of 15 years times 12 months in a year is going to be 180 months. Minus 1, close, divided by, open, 0 0.04, divided by 12, times, open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.04, divided by 12, close, to the power of 180 to begin, close and close. So let's punch this in and see what we come up with. 200,000 divided by 1, 2, 3. Come on. 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 12. Close parentheses. Power of 180. Now again, I have to arrow out. Minus 1, close, divided by, open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.04, divided by 12, close parentheses, power of, oops, I missed something there, didn't I? I go back here to this parentheses, I, got, I forgot to put in the 0 0.04, divided by 12 times, open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 12. Close parentheses, power of 180, close and close. Let's try it again. 200, 1, 2, 3. I feel like it did too. <clears throat> Think we took a step up today? There we go. So if you had $200,000 sitting there, even if only drawing 4% on it, you'd be able to take out $1,479.38 per month. Yes. That's why we had the 12 here. If we just put a 1 in there, then that would be your amount per year. And we'd be able to take out about $18,000 a year is what it would come out to be. That's not horrible. I mean, it's a good start. 200000 obviously, if you're planning on living for 15 years after retirement, 200000 is not an adequate retirement. You know, you're going to have to have Social Security on top of that or something. But you can see, you know, 1500 would be a good start. If I didn't have, you gotta remember, if you don't have to drive to work, you don't have a house payment, a lot of things in retirement will be cheaper. The good news is, when you take your test next Tuesday, unit two test next Tuesday, these types of questions would be extra credit questions. So I will not make you do annuity calculations on the test. Now where this is actually really helpful is this same calculation that tells you what your payment would be on a loan. So let's say you want to go out and buy, what's the fanciest truck you'd really like to buy right now? Should I just put like fifty thousand dollars down? Uh, like oh, let's be a little more. Real. How about sixty thousand? Eighty thousand? Okay. Eighty thousand dollars. So you're really getting fancy there. I know there's a lot of them that high fifty to sixty thousand dollars right now. Yeah. So eighty thousand dollars. How many years do you think you're gonna finance that over? They don't go quite that far with it. Um, it used to be five was the standard. Now six years is the standard. And I've seen them go as far as eight years. Let's do six years, like you said. Six years. And let's say even with a good credit, right now you can get car loans for three to four percent. 
So let's figure 4%. You guys are young, so you're not going to get the greatest rate. Your monthly payment will be 80000 divided by 1, 2, 3, 1 plus 0.04 divided by 12. To the power of 6 years times 12 is 72 periods, minus 1. Close divided by 0.04 divided by 12 times 1 plus 0.04 divided by 12. Power of 72, close and close. Think? That's about right, yeah. More like twelve hundred a month. Twelve fifty one sixty one. There's two, and I have full coverage insurance on that. It's going to be like 120 a month for you. Um, now, you could take that. Let's say you're going to do, stretch it out over eight years. Oops, that's not what I meant. So let's go through this, and we'll change the 72s to 96s. That's eight years. By the way, if you go eight years, chances are they're going to jack up your interest rate too. So you're probably not going to get four percent. You're probably going to be paying more like six percent. We're going to leave it at four percent just for comparison here. Eight years is still nine hundred seventy-five dollars a month. That's why it's over twenty years. So this is six years. This is eight years. That's an eighty thousand dollar truck. Now, if you, let's say you do $40,000 truck, that payment's exactly half. So you're still looking at like $626 for a $40,000 truck on six years. So a $40,000 truck over six years still is not really affordable. Well, over eight years, you're still looking at about $490 a month. $490 a month? But still, I mean, $600 a month, that's what I call a mortgage payment. My current mortgage is four is uh, 685 a month. That's what the tax is included in. It, so. That's a pretty uh, hefty payment. Okay, you still have, remember from yesterday, you had worked on page 97, 1 through 13. The odds, I said there were a couple problems in there with annuities in them. Now you could do those if you wanted to. Like I said, if those appear on a test, they will be extra credit. So if you don't do those in the homework, you, I'm not going to hold that against you. Then page 93, problems 1 through 21, the odds. Because I wanted to go from percents up to these interest calculations, and then we'll come back, we came back to the powers and roots. <laughs> 